Yeah, these kids are on heroin. Wait, yeah, you know, I don't want to get sliced for that shit. You better than me. You keep going. <laughs> 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 you know, this is like insane for me, so. I do enjoy the opportunity when the people somehow give me some warmth back, you know. Yeah, yeah man, it could, could be more hype on this opportunity. It was like, one, you know, That's what, you're once, never here. Once, you know? once we'd seen, we had to do something for a film. And he came... Maybe it's like, you know, one guy comes at 10 o'clock, the next guy comes, comes at 10.30, and I was scheduled for later. Scene comes late with his whole entourage. I have to do my shit now. Da, 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 I'm the great scene. And they show the guy for an hour. And after the hour, the whole crew came down holding their head. Like, that was the worst hour I spent in my life. Like, holy shit, that was difficult. Like, you know, and, and Richard can be great sometimes, or he can he can stutter and mumble and and get it all wrong. He can, you know, he's done it a thousand times too. You know, he even had a TV show. But catch him wrong, it doesn't go well. And when they got to me, I think we were done in ten minutes. And I'm like, holy shit, yeah, I did this before. I'm gonna waste your time. Not my first rodeo, yeah. man. Yeah, there you go. You know, they got you, you arrived on time. I arrived early. You got what you need. It's gonna help you film. It's called professionalism. You could be stuck. This is my own unique situation from 1978 to 79. That'd be all right. The woods were still still safe. No serial killers. You can go camping. <laughs> Not everywhere, but you know, you can still go camping. And I get murdered in the woods. I went to university to be a forest ranger. By the way. And the first job I looked for, you know, like trying, I realized the IBM thing wasn't going to work out. You know, it, you know, it was also way too decadent. It, it paid well, that's, that's what you were going to do, and then you, you, met, you met your dealer, right? <laughs> you sure what, what went down? Like? You, could, you could afford any drug habit, you could afford, you do your work well, you can buy a mistress, you can buy a house for your mistress. I had, I'm a kid, I had three cars, two apartments in Manhattan and pretend that I stayed home with my parents so they wouldn't know I had apartments. We went to country clubs, the Rye Country Club, Saltwater Pool. Mm. Hey, niggers and Jews at a country club? Yeah, military pace. Yeah, you were on our team. Uh-huh. Wow. Uh-huh. So this type of dynamic, like, yeah, this is not real. This, this is wrong. And, and and of course, somehow you get into the money thing. So I, I worked at night so I could make more money. And one night, night hard, and it's, it was a surface like this. I did a huge line of speed so I could, <laughs> so I could stay up. Yeah. And it hit me so hard. And I stood up, I you get know, the rush. And I looked around. I'm in the middle of a war room. We have a board. You know, it doesn't have missiles on it, but you know, this is where our computers are. Right? Yeah, what's, what's your computer doing there? Controlling a missile. <laughs> I'm like, wow, I'm 22, it's like Dr. Strangelove, I'm 22 years old, I just, you left all this shit for me? And I'm like, where is everybody? This is wrong. And I'm like, whoa, everybody else, they're the older adults, they're really swinging. They're all out fucking and sucking and doing good blow at the bar. <laughs> There's nobody there. This is how the country is run. It's amazing. We talk about that all the time, about how this the is real. The cocaine, the quality of the heroin, it's made set up to be that. Then with way. our little McDonald's, there's a, there's a chain of how you want to set up. And back then it's Ronald Reagan. So then all the rockets are pointed in the West. Okay. So you have the kid in White Plains, New York, in New Peter Bunker, completely doing speed. Okay, you're young and fresh, but what if I make a mistake? So we went to set off a rocket in Colorado. 
So the guys work in White Plains, New York, who's completely on speed, and coke and whatever else. He doesn't give two shits about the job. He just wants to get paid. That's why he does his work well. He can't stop that paycheck. It's only about the paycheck. I don't care who we kill. <laughs> it's about I I can buy a new car. I'm in a swimming pool. So and and also from that place. I saw my whole life, it was only one place I would ever move, and that was corporate headquarters. So I'd been to that building, like wow, 20 years here? And that's when I realized at a young, it was far better to play with Sharpies and stickers than to maybe kill some woman and her kid that did nothing to me. With, with, with nuclear warfare and, and considering warfare. You know, how I got here to America, I'm not really with their program. I can't be bought that far. But once I worked at IBM, I realized what the fuck he was going through. And it's a whole lifetime of shit. Growing up in Washington, D.C., and somehow, luckily, he's like, this is this too much. And he heard somehow black people were getting hired at a place called IBM in White Plains, New York. So he wrote he wrote the chief, and the chief said, hey, you come to New York, I'll interview you. And that got his bus money together via the university. Also, black folk had a, a network in this country of university people called fraternities and da da da. Mm -hmm. So from these educated folk, that stuff was like a lifeline. Mm -hmm. Okay, so he got lucky, according to my dad, was your first guy who ever was a black manager. My father got he got out of the army as a captain. He was like, yeah, but you can't give a white guy an order. You know, so he comes home with half his body all fucked up. You know, 18 months recovery. So dad was traumatized. He went through all that, works at fucking IBM all day. Then he has my little shithead ass at home and my stupid mother. He didn't want to <laughs> He, he, would, he would also go outside to do the garden in like his office clothes, and all the neighbors thought it was funny. No, Dad's traumatized. He didn't give a fuck. He's so happy to have a plot of little grass to cut. He, he would buy all, you know, oh, too much, you know, the IBM money, I got too much money. Let's go to the garden center and buy every unusual flower we've ever seen. We're black people, we don't know shit about it, but that's pretty. Let's just buy it and put it in the garden. We're an amazing garden. <laughs> so that's, all, that's basically and it's all colorful. It was, it was all very much like graffiti. Walking out my front door, it was like this. Now, what, it, what did Dad buy last weekend? And what was cute was that well in the garden center, and while he's busy, then there's a spray paint aisle. <laughs> can of test was 75 cents. My allowance didn't allow for that. <laughs> hey, Dad. <laughs> hey, he had a good money. Good money. He said, oh, I want in poker. I'll buy you a model boat. Oh, cool. Can you buy the can of paint for me so I can paint the boat? <laughs> <laughs> so, the, the worst thing about my first arrest was that when I came home from the precinct, the lie was over. <laughs> he was like, well, this kid has, I bought all that paint for a year. Oh, shit. Yeah, there are no orange boats. Testers. Yeah, there are no pink <laughs> boats. Uh-huh, uh-huh. So that, I knew my mother was gonna whip me. You know, she thought that would lead to a little life of crime and bank robbery or whatever, and she did with me. So it hurt me to that, it hurt my mother so much. However, my father, he's just more practical. Again, Buddha, okay, you did that. He said, let's not do that again because you end up in jail. Why don't you paint to the basement? Then I tried that and of course the whole house stunk. That's just was nasty. So, mm, this is not working. Maybe, you know, another time take a piece of wood out back and paint. And, you know, it's not a train. <laughs> it's not the subway. It's not working here. Uh, and I really, I really tried to stop doing graffiti. Because it disappointed my 
mother tremendously and I was a crime, you go to jail for it. And I also, then I have to change my name because I would see the police who arrested me in the subway. And, they, and they're not stupid, they're adults. They come in and they look at your fingernails. Mm -hmm. What made you change your name from Star Trek? You see the police every week. Mr. Officer Smitty and the gentleman, I think his actual name was Bumper. And they wore, they wore uniforms, but they knew how to catch our little black rat asses. They weren't afraid to walk down the center of the track in the tunnel. Because right. they smell the pain. And in a way, just to get the kids out. And in a way, kind of like a teacher, they realize it's going wrong for young black children. You know, these kids are not in school. They're in here noon paying the train. This is, you know, they can't put it all together. Their job is to stop crime. Why do we have, you know? So they were a bit sympathetic. They never hurt you. If you had paint, they had to arrest you. They spray you in the face. Or, you know, they're, they're black. You're all black kids, you're all black kids once, right? They're no different. They probably did mischief when they were a kid. They're not stupid. And anyway, it was like cold turkey junkie. And luckily, Kenzo was a spoiled kid, but I went away every summer. So I looked forward to that, and I got, you know, I went to a summer camp. And then I you know, get older, they call it work. Then you just start working at the camp. So I had this weird duality. Between, I realized, oh wow, I want to be a forest ranger, that way I don't have to deal with people. <laughs>